welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today. As you can see, um, my filming area is a little bit different. I'm at my desk and the reason for this is I just got tired of dealing with the sound of my new fridge in the background and I figured it would just have better audio back here and hopefully it doesn't look too bad. I tried to decorate the screens a little bit. You can see my new setup. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, this will work a little bit better. We can work on decorating the background a little bit more. Anyways, what we're going to be working on today is a dragon, and I wanted to do something really long and thin and elegant, but I also wanted to pick a very strange, interesting color palette, and I thought a toucan looked really cool, and my brain was like, what if we stretched out a toucan? So we're going to be making a long toucan dragon. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to work on for our dragon is going to be the clay head, and then we'll move on to making the clay feet. Now, because we're basing our dragon off of a toucan, obviously I want to use that beak. I want to have that kind of the focal point of the piece. So I'm going to be starting out with a really large piece of tin foil so I can make that beak also kind of hollow. This will help with weight so our head isn't too heavy. Anyways, I'm going to get this completely covered in clay and blended together to get a basic shape, and then we can start adding our detail to it. Now just because I want to use the beak with our toucan dragon doesn't mean I want it to just look like a toucan beak. I want to change it up a little bit and make it look like it blends into the face a little bit more. It makes you kind of question if it's even a complete beak or not. So I'm going to change up the shape a little bit. I want the basic outline to be normal, but I want to just kind of thin out and give it more of a reptilian feel. Once I have my basic shape laid out for the beak and the head, I'm going to start adding our eyes. So I'm going to take a little bit of clay and I'm going to lay those out where I want the eyes to go and then I'm going to pick out my glass eyes. So for this, I picked out these really pretty kind of bluish orange ones. I figured these would work really well and they kind of complement the colors that I'm going to add to the beak. So I'm going to get my glass eyes placed and then I'm going to start building up clay around them to make the eyelids and then I'm going to also adjust the clay and add a little bit more here and there for where I want to add the nostrils. So with the nostrils, I'm just kind of winging it, trying to make them go well with the face, but also I don't want them to look like normal bird nostrils or anything like that. I'm just trying to do something a little bit more alien so they look more unique. And then lastly, I need to figure out where our mouth is going to open. So I'm going to roughly sketch out on both sides. I'm taking my time with this because I want both sides to be nice and even. But I'm going to sketch that out and then once I know how I want that to go, I'm going to kind of clean it up a little bit and really define the shape of where our beak opens. And that's pretty much it for sculpting the face. I don't want to add too much texture or details right now, mainly because I want to have most of the details with the painting. I want to have a lot of vibrant colors and patterns, and I don't want anything to really distract from that. So once we get to that point, you'll end up seeing how detailed our face is actually going to get. But right now it's pretty simple. So I'm going to bake our clay head in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit and while that's baking we can start working on our clay feet. So these are going to be the wireframes that I'm going to use to make our clay feet. I've got two for the front and two for the back. Now I don't have the toes laid out like a toucan's feet, which normally have two toes in the front and two toes in the back. I'm going to have three in the front and none in the back, mainly because I just want the feet to be more shaped like a dragon's foot. But we are going to have a lot of characteristics still in the feet that are going to look like the toucan's feet, mainly the color and the scale shapes. 
Also with these feet, I want them to be a lot thinner than I normally do for such a large clay head. Normally I would have them a lot bulkier, but I want them to be very thin and bird-like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the clay to the wireframe a little bit differently. I'm going to start by building up the more leg portion of the foot and then we can work on the toes. So I'm going to take some large strips of clay that are basically the thickness that I want the clay feet and I'm going to start adding them to the wireframe. So I'm actually going to be sculpting this portion of the foot before we move on to the toes. I'm also going to do a pre-bake in between doing this and the toes. So I'm just going to use my tools and mark out where all the scales are going to go, kind of redefine the shape of them a little bit, pinch the clay, just keep adjusting everything. And I'm also going to throw in a little bit of a texture with a brush to make some lines. And then we're going to do our pre-bake. Our pre-bake will probably be just about 20 minutes at our normal baking temperature, which is 275 Fahrenheit. And then once that's done baking and is cool to touch, I can start sculpting the toes. So basically the toes are just like the rest of the foot, just kind of smaller, and there's three of them instead of one. So I'm just going to add that clay, blend everything together, add the scales, and just kind of clean everything up and make sure it has a nice texture. So I'm going to make sure to get all four of our legs done first and then we can start baking these. So I'm going to put them in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once we're done baking and they've cooled to touch, we can start working on painting them. So I'm going to start painting the clay head first, and the colors that I'm actually going to be using are going to be based off of the Kiel Build Toucan. So I really like the coloring of this toucan. It has a lot of greens and oranges and reds, and I'm going to start by primering the entire clay face with a really bright green. And then I'm just going to be slowly adding each color one at a time. So the next color that I'm going to be adding is more of a turquoise kind of bluish green and I'm just going to mark out where that's going. I'm going to blend this color in a little bit. Some colors I'm going to be blending in, others I'm just going to be painting as markings so they're going to be kind of more defined than this. Actually, I had so many markings with this design that I decided to actually kind of cheat. Well, not really cheat, it's just going to make it a lot easier. I actually took a pen and I sketched out where the markings are going to go first. So I just kind of very lightly drew out where I wanted to paint everything and then I filled it in kind of like a coloring book. So I'm just going to get all my little designs marked out and painted in and then we can start working on just kind of cleaning everything up and adding a little bit more detail. and then we'll add a little bit of a shadowing in that crease around where the beak opens. I'm 
I'm gonna have to let all my paint dry and then I'm gonna use a tool and scrape away any excess paint that has gotten on our glass eyes and they're, they're pretty much covered in paint right now I'm not gonna lie uh, I usually don't really care if I get paint on them because it's so easy to peel off now thankfully painting our clay feet is gonna be a lot easier than all the detail that we had in our face so I'm actually going to start by priming them kind of a very dark grayish blue and then we can start adding highlights and stuff on top of them. And then lastly, I'm just going to be painting all the claws a nice black color. Like I said, pretty simple. Okay, so now that we have all of our clay pieces done, we can start working on the sewing and getting all that ready so we can put our doll together. So these are all the pattern pieces that I sketched out to make the body. And like I said at the beginning, we're going to be making a really long dragon. In fact, he's so long that I couldn't leave the neck and body and tail one piece. I had to at least cut the head and have that separate. So we need to sew those pieces together real quick first. I just didn't have fabric long enough to cut it out into one solid piece. So I'm going to get those two pieces sewn together for each side, and then I'm going to take the inside portions for the legs. Lately, I've been really liking to have the back legs connected to the body. This way just kind of shapes the body a lot better. So I'm going to take the inside portion of the legs, and I'm going to pin them to the leg portion that's connected to the body, and we're going to sew down the front of them. I can then take the strip of fabric, which is going to be for the belly, and we can start sewing the side pieces to each side of this. So we're just going to try and get one solid piece of fabric to work with when we put the doll together. Next, I'm going to work on the front legs. So the front legs also have an inside portion and an outside portion. They're just not connected to the body right now. So I'm going to sew those pieces together and then we're going to figure out where they're going to connect to the body. And I'm going to cut some little lines for them to be sewn into place. So we're not going to close up any of the legs right now. We're just connecting them to the body. Okay, so we have all the fabric for the body put together, but we do need to make some wings. I'm not going to be making some really large wings for this piece. They're going to be kind of more fairy sized. So I have some fake leather cut out into some feathery layers for our wings, and I'm going to sew these together first. Then I have some fabric cut out for the body of the wing, and I'm just going to sew these in place and stuff them. And then once I have my wings done, we can start putting our doll together on the wireframe. So I have a pretty simple wireframe set up, and I haven't added the wires for the wings yet. We'll add those once we start adding the wings, just to make it a little bit easier. But I do have the front portion kind of reinforced a little bit because of how heavy the head is. So I'm going to start putting everything together by taking the fabric for the body and running it over the wireframe. So the wires for the legs are just going to go through the fabric where the legs are. And then I'm just going to take our clay head and we're going to attach it to the wire for the neck. So I'm just going to glue that in place and then once that's dried I can take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of the head.
Now I'm gonna start closing everything up. So I'm gonna start by sewing the back of the neck closed and stuffing it. So I'm gonna stuff it a little bit, sew it a few inches, stuff, sew, stuff, sew. Get to where I want to connect the wings to the body and I'm gonna cut some little holes for where I want them to go. So I'm gonna cut those real quick. I'm gonna then take the fabric of the wings and I'm gonna sew them in place on the sides of the body. We can then take the wire frame for the wings, which is just a simple one piece of wire that's bent, and we can wrap it in place on the rest of the wire frame. Once we have the wire frame in place, we can then run the wings over those wires and we can continue stuffing and sewing up the body. When I get to the end of the tail, I want to add some feathers. So I'm going to take that same fake leather that I used for the other feathers on the wings, and I'm going to cut some pieces for that and glue those in place. So I'm going to layer a few pieces, and then I can take the fabric for the tail and glue it around the bases of the feathers and close everything up. Now I just need to add the legs. I'm going to add the clay pieces to the wire frame, just wrap everything together, and then I can take the fabric for the legs and glue them around the bases of the feet. I'm going to let the glue dry a little bit and then I can stuff and close up those legs. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is add a little bit more detail. I figured a cool gem on the chest would look nice, and then adding a little bit of fur fabric. Now basically with the gem, I want to sew it in place. I don't want to glue it directly to the body. I figured it would look a lot nicer to be kind of set into the fabric. So I'm going to glue it to a fabric backing, and then I have a piece of fabric cut. I basically traced the size of the gem, and I cut a hole that was slightly smaller, and I'm going to lay this over and glue it in place. Then I'm just going to take this fabric, and I'm going to sew it to the chest. And then for the top of the head, kind of going down the back of the neck, I want to add pretty much what you would call a mohawk. So I have a bit of black fur fabric, and I want to add a hint of color to this. So I'm going to sew in some strips of colors that I think will go nicely. So I have a little bit of purple to match the gem, and then a little bit of green to match the face. So I'm going to sew these in place, and then I'm going to basically glue this to the top portion of the head, and then sew the sides in place on the body. Once I have that in place, I just need to touch up the fur a little bit, so I'm going to go over the sides with a hair trimmer and just kind of clean everything up.
Okay guys, and here is our Toucan Dragon. He's super, super long. I'm so happy with him. I want to do this body style on something different. It's just super thin and tiny and it's really long and stretched out and I just, I really enjoy the body style, especially with the shape of his head. But anyways, I'm going to have him in my shop. So if anyone wants to buy him, check the links down below to my website. I've got that link down below. And then I've also got a bunch of art supplies linked down below. So if you're interested in making your own doll or just seeing more of what I tend to do with mine of what materials I like to use, you can check those links out. Now these are affiliated links, so if you do buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!